Have you ever thought about an issue and said to yourself, why should I care? It doesn't even impact me. Well, think again. I'm Natalie Bensavanga and I am back with a chance to dare to care. This show hopes to inspire so that we can see the connections between issues that are affecting our communities and find ways to activate to make a difference. And this month, we are talking about the need for paid family leave, how it impacts us all, and why we should dare to care about this. I am here with Josie Badger. She is the owner of Peacock Consulting Services and a disability rights advocate. Josie, thank you so much for being with me today. I'm so happy to be here. Well, you know, you and I have been working a little bit together uh, more recently, which has been really great. And I've gotten to learn so much more about the issues surrounding paid leave. Can you talk in broad strokes, just for people that may not really understand the topic, what is paid leave and why do we need it statewide? So paid leave, um, specifically in what we're going to be talking about today, is the the plan and legislation around making sure that individuals um, who are either caregivers or need care can take time to away from their jobs to heal, to provide that care to loved ones without risking their own finances or even their job in general. So when we're talking about paid leave, how does this differ, let's say, from taking a sick day? Most of the time, sick days are a one-time thing, we get an illness, but there are very few, actually less than, like, um, less than 40% of Pennsylvanians have access to any type of paid leave, including sick days. But this is um, more for individuals who have experienced an onset of an illness um, that's longer term. Maybe we're in an accident, or maybe they are caring for a loved one, a parent, a child who is dealing with those similar issues. Yeah, and what I found really interesting about talking um, around the topic of paid leave was just how expansive it is, because I do think a lot of people even think about paid leave as just taking maternity or paternity leave, and it has this very narrow scope. But what you're talking about goes well beyond that. I was reading some um, information focused on the idea if someone is suffering from PTSD and needs familial support, or they're coming home from rehab, and they might need a helping hand with, with support and family around them. Or chemotherapy, your sibling gets sick, and they need you to take care of their kids after school. And So it's just such an expansive idea. What made you want to dive in and get so intimately connected to it? Well, originally, um, I was brought into this conversation because of my role in the disability community. Mm -hmm. um, I have two businesses that I hire folks with disabilities and also support them in becoming advocates and getting positions um, and jobs. And so many individuals with disabilities either are going to have future health conditions they're going to need um, to address or um, you know, they, they themselves have to be caregivers as well. And so many of us are trying to get jobs. We're working um, at higher rates than ever before, but many are afraid to take a job knowing that if they have to take a little bit of time off for a surgery, they could lose their job and thus not have other supports to keep them off the street. And so they end up not doing a job at all, staying on social security because it's safer and that shouldn't be the choice um, or the two options that are out there. So that's how I got started in this. So what I find really fascinating about that is there's this word that people use a lot. Maybe you can explain what it is and how it relates to this. When we're talking about an ableist society, not having paid leave really fits into that framework, doesn't it? Goodness, yes, it does. Um, so ableism is sort of like racism or the other isms of discrimination based on the norm, um, which isn't a thing. Um, and so assuming that having a certain ability level is the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we assume the individuals are always going to be able-bodied, if we assume that individuals are not going to get ill, we're assuming an ableist perspective and 
Um, if we live long enough, if we have that privilege, we will likely become disabled. It's estimated that about one in four individuals will experience disability in their lifetime. And so we need to be ready. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of other countries, all, they're doing this. They're already ready. And it's the United States that really seems to be lagging behind. And when I started reading some of the statistics on the Family uh, Care Act website, one of them that really stuck out to me was that 78% of Pennsylvanians support a statewide family leave program. So can you talk a little bit about why this is maybe the perfect time to explore the Family Care Act and what that act means? Absolutely. And I think you bring up a great point, Natalie, that it doesn't matter what political party we affiliate with. This is not a political issue. This is a human issue. Mm -hmm. And whether we're looking at Democrats, maybe more liberal individuals where um, over 70% support paid leave, or if we're looking at much more conservative individuals, a majority of them still support paid family and medical leave. And so it is a win. Um, if we're talking about elections or politics, it is a win. Um, but this, once again, should not be about what party we are on or in. It's about our constituents and recognizing that we don't all have the luck to find the right employer that has the right amount of money to provide that time off. We, it shouldn't be up to luck, which, you know, uh, St. Patrick's Day is coming up this month. It should not be up to luck whether mm -hmm. we're fortunate enough to be able to find that. We should have the ability to work and provide care for those who we love, keeping them out of nursing homes and facilities, keeping them at home where we know they're safer and loved and treated in a way they should be. So looking at all of that then, can you dive in and explain what the Family Care Act entails? The Pennsylvania Family Care Act is a bill that's been in the works for many years. Um, and it is something that is obviously state-led, is in the House and the Senate. Um, and this would allow for paid time off and job protections for either those individuals that are experiencing a medical need. Um, and that can also include giving birth. Mm -hmm. It protects um, military families who um, individuals might be being deployed and they need to relocate. It supports caregivers and thinking about how many of us are in that sandwich generation of taking care of our children and maybe our older parents. Um, and also really is supportive of this new thing called victims of violence. And so that is for individuals who unfortunately have experienced violence, whether that's physical um, or even stalking protects them to be able to get those services and supports um, that they need to be able to be safe and return to work in addition to those of us maybe needing that care. Because of COVID and the burden it has placed on our society, and now looking at how many new people have become disabled by long COVID, this to me just seems like we're at this fervored pitch that we just can't ignore the need for paid leave. How does this benefit the economy in the long run? In general, we still see women as the caregivers. We still see them as being able to take that time off for family, for children, for having children. And yet we are not in a world or economy that one parent or one adult can pay for the family. Um, and so we are losing money by not allowing people to take these roles and work. We are saying you can do one of the, of the two. We're saying you can either have a family or care for people in your family, or you can work. Mm -hmm. That's not an option anyone should do. So this would add jobs, workers, which we know there's a workforce shortage, um, but also prevent some of those families from being put onto permanent benefits. Um, so what that means is food stamps, welfare. And those are things that were created initially to help individuals get by, to maybe get them to the next job. But in our economy, we often 
put individuals in those systems and create barriers for preventing them to returning to work to the life they want to live. And so ultimately, it is preventing them from ever needing to move into those systems. I know you were talking to me a little bit about this as well. This can also protect people who need to be cared for as well, correct? Yeah, and that's something that um, I'm really excited about. Um, as a person with a very significant disability, I have power wheelchair, I have a ventilator, I have 24 hour care. Mm -hmm. um, trying to make a job work for me was difficult. And in one part, how I created my businesses. Um, but a lot of folks don't have that ability. And so individuals who have significant disabilities who want to work have to be thinking about what if I get sick? What if I need to go into um, a hospital for a procedure? But they are also very reliant on caregivers to provide that support. And something that I'm very excited about is in the Senate bill, there is language about vulnerable adults. And that refers to individuals with disabilities who are employed but are reliant on others for their care, safety, being able to go to work um, because there are an unbelievable number of individuals who are dealing with abuse from their caregivers. Um, you know, there's a higher number of individuals working who have disabilities than ever before, just recently, according to national statistics. But to be able to go to work, many of us rely on care and sometimes, unfortunately, due to the low wages of caregivers, the isolation, abuse happens. And normally, that abuse is by caregivers, whether they're paid or unpaid. March 1st is the National Disability Day of Mourning, where we celebrate the lives of individuals um, who have passed because of caregiver abuse, family abuse, and sometimes homicide. Um, and so this will allow for another way for individuals to know that they can work, receive care, um, and if there's a problem, that they can mention it, they can bring it up and not be afraid of losing that job. Um, and that's huge. So many folks are afraid of losing the very thing that allowed them to be independent in the first place, that many of them don't report it. What I love about all of this, and thank you so much for sharing all of that information, is the elasticity it provides our society and the people that live in it. Instead of having this like rigid idea of work and home life, it allows for the expansion and the contraction of how we really do live our lives, right? Thank you so much, Josie, for giving us a reason to dare to care around this issue. It impacts all of us at all phases and stages of life. Thank you again. Thank you. Do you have an issue that matters to you and your community and you think more people need to know about it? Let's connect. Find me on social media at Natalie Bensavanga or email me admin at nataliebensavanga.com. I dare you.